The truth about cholesterol and why we were misled for decades. See, the truth is far more complex and nuanced. Yes, it's vital to take care of your cholesterol. And yes, it has a major impact on disease. But it's not a simple case of high equals bad and low equals good. In fact, artificially low cholesterol has been associated with a whole host of diseases and health dysfunctions. So today, we'll explore the truth about cholesterol control and what really matters. And of course, practical steps to promote healthy cholesterol function so you can enjoy a long and vibrant life with a strong heart and a sharp mind, less inflammation, and an overall great ability to age gracefully and of course, enjoy life. But before we dive in, can you do me a favor and click the thumbs up and help me spread the word about heart disease prevention and ring the bell to stay up to date with my latest videos. I want to make sure you get the latest info so you can live a long, healthy life. And guys, stick around to find out how to get four free gifts. I guarantee both you and your heart will love them. See, in 1950s, a man named Insul Keys initiated the war on cholesterol and saturated fats with his seven country study. And the seven countries study linked cholesterol with heart disease through selective data usage and shaky science. His opinions shaped dietary guidelines and public health policies, essentially labeling cholesterol and saturated fat as bad. And over the preceding decades, many scientists challenged these findings. And while official guidelines have been slow to catch up, there's growing recognition that a proper cholesterol function is more relevant for health than the simple metric of cholesterol levels. See, in 2004, the president of the American College of Cardiology published a letter acknowledging that previous official advice was flawed and admitting that the US food pyramid may have placed a role in the current epidemics of obesity, lipid abnormalities, type 2 diabetes, and metabolic syndromes. And this demonstrated a shift in understanding the role of cholesterol and that previously it was misguided. See, our cholesterol levels constantly change depending on stress and other things going on in life. In one study titled uh, Within Person Fluctuations of Serum Cholesterol and Lipoproteins, researchers tested the same people over four weeks without any medical intervention. And they did find that for 95% of the people, cholesterol levels changed more than 20%. In 10% of the cases, the readings moved from desirable uh, to high risk or vice versa. And following traditional cholesterol categories, the researchers concluded that random testing may result in enormous risk assignment or therapeutic intervention. Essentially, this means that, how can I put this? Depending on the hour you're tested, you might be told that you are healthy or told that you need medical intervention. So what's the big deal? The, see, cholesterol plays an essential role in the body. It's a waxy substance that serves as a building block for cells. It's fundamental in the production of hormones such as estrogen, testosterone, and cortisol, and chemical messengers that regulate growth, uh, metabolism, reproduction, and stress responses it's also essential for nerves. Cholesterol is a key component of the myelin sheath, the protective layer surrounding your nerve fibers, enabling the transmission of nerve impulses. So for example, if you touch, let's say a hot stove, nerve impulses go to work, telling you to take your hands off. But keep in mind, the whole process happens in a fraction of a second, a protective reflex, thanks largely to the myelin sheath, which is made of cholesterol. In addition, cholesterol is vital for vitamin D synthesis. So when your skin is exposed to sunlight, cholesterol in your skin is converted to vitamin D. And this is essential for uh, bone health, immune function, and numerous other processes. And at a cell level, cholesterol supports cell membranes. The protective barriers that surround cells and allow them to maintain both their shape while also being flexible, promoting optimal function in the eyes, hands, legs, and of course, organs. Also, it's important to recognize that cholesterol is not inherently harmful. Rather, it's cholesterol quality that matters. So before we move on, it's important to differentiate between cholesterol itself and the lipoproteins that carry it into the bloodstream. So this distinction is often overlooked. 
So that said, cholesterol is a waxy substance that's a building block for our bodies. See, lipoproteins, on the other hand, are proteins that act as carriers for cholesterol and other fats in the bloodstream. So they are like uh, delivery vans transporting cholesterol to different destinations within the body. And the main types of lipoprotein are LDL, known as low-density lipoprotein, and HDL, known as high-density lipoprotein. And LDL, often referred to as bad cholesterol, transports cholesterol from the liver where it is produced to cells throughout the body. So check this out. When an injury occurs, such as, as a cut or wound, LDL plays a crucial role in the repair process. So rushing to the site of injury, carrying cholesterol to aid in tissue repair and regeneration. It's like a fleet of trucks delivering building materials to a construction site. The cholesterol brought by LDL is actually used to rebuild and maintain tissue structures. So on a day-to-day -day basis, LDL also ensures that cholesterol reaches its regular destinations where it is needed for processes like the production of viral acids for digestion, the synthesis of hormones and the strengthening of bones through vitamin D conversion. And on the other hand, we have HDL, it's often called good cholesterol, operates as a cleanup crew, collecting excess cholesterol from cells and tissues, and of course, returning it uh, to the liver for processing and elimination. It's like a recycling truck preventing the buildup of excess cholesterol in the bloodstream and reducing the risk of, let's say, plaque formation in the arteries. So understanding the distinction between cholesterol and lipoprotein is crucial for recognizing their prospective roles in the body. And cholesterol itself is not inherently good or bad. It's the proper functioning of lipoproteins like LDL and HDL that determine cholesterol's impact on health. Likewise, LDL isn't inherently bad, but the problem starts when it becomes small, uh, dense, oxidized, and of course, dysfunctional. So how does that happen? Let's look at oxidation. See, oxidation creates havoc in the body. It's the real villain in the whole uh, cholesterol story. See, if you leave an apple out on the kitchen counter, it will turn brown. See, that's oxidation. So likewise, cholesterol becomes damaged when it undergoes oxidation. But it has far greater consequences than a brown apple, of course. So when cholesterol becomes oxidized, it can do its job properly. Of course, impairing hormone synthesis, cell membrane integrity, and other important psychological processes and beginning to damage the body. So it's like trying to walk on a broken leg. More and more things start to go wrong. See, oxidized LDL particles promote inflammation and oxidative stress, leading to cell dysfunction, damaging artery walls, uh, triggering atherosclerosis, heart disease, and of course, kidney disease. So the real question is, what causes cholesterol oxidation? See, oxidation can be triggered by various factors. Excessive uh, consumption of refined sugars, such as those found in sugary drinks, sweets, and processed foods is actually a major culprit in the modern diet right now. Uh, a high blood sugar environment uh, promotes glycation, increasing the likelihood of LDL particles becoming oxidized. And of course, beyond sugar, anything else that's going to spike blood sugar is also going to lead to oxidation, such as uh, refined carbohydrates like bread, pasta, or pastries, white rice, and high glycemic foods like potatoes. Um, even smoking, uh, environmental pollutants, and other unhealthy lifestyle also does contribute. Okay, so before I jump into the steps to optimize cholesterol, would love to give you guys a free uh, book, Liver Detoxification Protocol Plus Mouth Care Tips. Click the link in the description below to claim these free gifts. Okay, so that said, let's uh, get into the steps to actually optimize cholesterol. So number five, engage in regular physical activity. See, regular exercise offers numerous benefits of cholesterol health. Engaging in aerobic activities, uh, strength training, and other forms of exercise can actually increase HDL cholesterol, helping your body to clear out any oxidized LDL before it has a chance to do damage. And of course, 
exercise is going to improve overall cardiovascular fitness and of course keep your whole body functioning well. Number four, eat good food. Eating a nutrition uh, rich diet is key for healthy cholesterol. Focus on consuming whole foods that are rich in fiber, antioxidants, and essential fats. See, antioxidants are particularly important as they're going to protect your body and make it more resilient against oxidation. Emphasize fruits, vegetables, spices, healthy proteins, and sources of healthy fats like avocados, uh, sprouted nuts and seeds, and good quality grass-fed, grass-finished fats. And if you can actually incorporate foods like grass-fed meats, pasture-raised eggs, and wild-caught salmon would be excellent. These have a much better nutrient profile and supports healthy cholesterol compared to their mass-produced counterparts. And quality protein contains a better balance of omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acids, which helps maintain healthy cholesterol levels and reduce inflammation. Uh, Free-range eggs have shown to actually contain much more vitamins and antioxidants, as well as higher levels of omega-3 fatty acids compared to caged eggs. And of course, uh, while wild-caught uh, fish typically have lower levels of contaminants, which break havoc with cholesterol and other problems associated with heavy metal toxicity. Number three, chronic stress can contribute to cholesterol oxidation and negatively impact cardiovascular health. So implement stress reducing techniques such as meditation, deep breathing, exercises, yoga, engaging in activities that bring joy and relaxation, and of course, earthing. So make sure you sleep well with a healthy bedtime routine as studies also have linked poor sleep to heart disease. Number two, avoid smoking and limit alcohol consumption. Smoking does damage blood vessels, oxidizes cholesterol, and contributes to atherosclerosis. So quitting smoking or avoiding it altogether gives you a significant advantage. Now, similarly, studies have shown that excessive alcohol consumption directly increases LDL oxidation. And number one, choose cooking oils wisely, as rancid cooking oils cause major cholesterol oxidation and are considered one of the worst foods for not only heart disease, but overall health. Refined polyunsaturated fats, often called vegetable oils or seed oils, are incredibly unstable, meaning that they are vulnerable to oxidation from light, heat, and oxygen. These include canola oil, corn oil, soybean, sunflower oil, safflower, cottonseed, sesame, grapeseed, peanut, and walnut. In fact, a 2018 study titled Omega-6 Vegetable Oils as a Driver of Coronary Heart Disease found that vegetable oils are a major culprit for oxidation LDL, chronic low-grade inflammation, atherosclerosis, and heart disease in general. So what oils are healthier for cholesterol? You have olive oil is far safer option. It's a monounsaturated fats, uh, meaning it has a different chemical structure which makes it less prone to going rancid from light, heat, and oxygen. Studies have shown olive oil to reduce the susceptible of LDL oxidation as well as offering antioxidant properties which protect the heart. And of course, beyond olive oil, other good options for cooking include the grass-fed finished butter, ghee, coconut oil, and animal fats like suet, beef tallow, or duck fat. All of these contain saturated fats which are very stable and thus resistant to oxidation. Now, you've probably been told that saturated fats are bad, but as I've discussed, it's cholesterol oxidation and overall cholesterol function that we need to be aware of. And in fact, numerous studies have found no link between saturated fat and heart disease. For instance, a 2020 study titled Saturated Fat and Health, a reassessment and proposal for food-based recommendations concluded that studies found no beneficial effects of reducing saturated fat intake for cardiovascular disease and total mortality, and instead found protective effect against stroke. Also, saturated fat increases low-density lipoprotein cholesterol in most individuals. This is not due to increasing levels of small, dense LDL particles, but rather larger LDL particles. So, as you can see, developments in scientific technology and the understanding of cholesterol have well and truly changed since 1950s. 
And in the case of coconut oil, recent studies show that it has significant potential for protecting against cholesterol oxidation, uh, preventing the aggregation of amyloid B peptides, which is associated with Alzheimer's disease. And using a blood lipid profile, aiding fat loss, especially with dangerous visceral fat surrounding the abdominal, and has broad anti-inflammatory effects. So definitely stay away from polyunsaturated cooking oils, which are prone to oxidation and creates enormous damage in our bodies and opt for more stable monounsaturated and saturated options. So there you have it. The real truth is that cholesterol is vital for health. Since the 1950s, we've learned that it's not simply a matter of how high cholesterol is. The important thing is that it's healthy, functional, large, fluffy, and resilient. And to promote large, fluffy, and resilient cholesterol, it's important to engage in regular physical activity, eat good, healthy food, manage stress, avoid smoking and limit alcohol, and choose cooking oils wisely. And by implementing these steps, it's possible to promote healthy and resilient cholesterol that serves you, keeps your arteries healthy and clear, and support a healthy cardiovascular system. I really hope you found this video useful. Let me know what you think, and if you have any questions or tips to share with others watching, feel free to leave a comment and remember to get your free gifts. Just click the link in the description below to get them and remember to like this video and click the subscribe button so that you can stay up to date as I release new videos. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers.